Um, so let me welcome everyone now formally on the second day of the uh, of the conference. Um, my name is Yannick Dupont, CEO of Spark, uh, and welcome to this new innovative way of conferencing online. With so thanks to the folks of uh, Run the World uh, that today. Um, and next week, we are going to turn to the impact of the COVID-19 crisis on small and medium enterprise, uh, job creation programming across the world, uh, primarily in, uh, in the MENA region where we're focusing. Uh, but today we have our second day on higher vocational education and the impact. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's an area also close to the heart of Spark. I think most of you uh, know our uh, mostly our uh, scholarship program with soon uh, luckily, the 10,000th uh, award for a scholarship. We're uh, progressing with that and also helping universities to move online. Um, and in these lights, and also to get further inspiration, uh, I'm very happy and proud uh, to introduce our keynote speaker of today, uh, Dr. Uh, Tariq al Gurk, who will speak on the impact of the COVID-19 on TVET and higher education and share his ideas on how to best cope with the challenges that are ahead of us. Um, and he represents Dubai Cares, and as many of you do know, he they're playing a very key role in helping achieve the um, Sustainable Development Goal, number four, um, which ensures inclusive and quality education for all, um, especially in difficult uh, regions, uh, in emergencies and protracted crisis. So that's very relevant for uh, today's discussion. Um, before I hand you the floor, uh, Tarek, um, for everyone attending, uh, just to, to note that for each session, you need to separately join today. And for those who are interested to um, to do networking, uh, I encourage you to try out the happy hour networking meeting without drinks. But there you can uh, make direct connections to people that are on the, uh, on the conference uh, app. But without further ado, um, Tarek, the floor is yours and uh, I'm, I'll just disappear for a moment. I'll come back after the after the talk. Sure. Thank you, Yannick. Thank you very much, and and thank you for giving us uh, this opportunity as well. Um, I'm just going to start by talking about Dubai Cares in general and what we do globally, and then maybe take a deep dive on 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 on, on TVET and the challenges that TVET is facing uh, uh, during and and maybe post uh, COVID-19. Uh, um, Dubai Cares was established in 2007. Uh, by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, who is the Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE, and he's also the ruler of Dubai, with 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 one aim, which is to provide uh, um, um, children with quality education globally. That was the main aim. That was the main goal at that time. And and if we remember that time, we were talking about the MDGs. So it was the MDG two that we were tackling. And uh, at that time, there was no quality education. It was always it was about access. It was about developing countries. Uh, but His Highness's vision was was uh, much bigger than that. And 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 let's not forget that the MG, MDG started in the year 2000, set by uh, um, the international community and and, and the UN, um, and where in 2005, um, um, when the UN had another meeting to see where the goals have reached with the MDGs. Um, um, the UN announced that MDG2, which is education, will not be achieved by 2015. And that's what sparked uh, all the, uh, the, the alarms and the red flags to His Highness to establish an entity that can help uh, uh, reshape uh, the dialogue globally and bring other philanthropists to help uh, achieve uh, uh, the goal. And, and then in 2015, of course, the goals changed and it became the SDG4 and, and, and we expanded our mandate. So we work uh, basically into two main pillars when it comes to education. One is to provide access to education and the other is to provide quality education. And access where everything from um, um, infrastructure to water sanitation and hygiene in schools to um, uh, building and renovating schools and classrooms to um, um, health in schools and in health we focus on deworming um, and, and also in nutrition uh, there's a big focus on school feeding. That's from the access side and in quality we focus on teacher training, curriculum development, literacy numeracy, adult literacy numeracy. Um, um, and early childhood development. Um, we also have a big focus on um, 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 girls' education because um, uh, gender equality is a cross-cutting theme throughout all these uh, programmatic interventions. But we also have 
um, 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 pledged uh, at the uh, World uh, Humanitarian uh, Forum in Istanbul uh, back in 2016 that one third of our global uh, of our uh, global annual funding will be towards education and emergencies. So 33% every year goes towards education and emergencies, and the rest would go towards a normal uh, uh, context uh, and, and, and normal settings when it comes to education. Now, uh, youth uh, has been something that has been added newly to Dubai Cares, and that was uh, uh, post-2015. Uh, so th those were during the SDG days. So in 2016, we started going, taking deep dives into towards youth empowerment. And of course, when we're talking about youth empowerment, we have to talk about the entrepreneurial side and, of course, about the vocational side, and we do uh, uh, both. Uh, and and and, uh, and 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 then we have also started working uh, uh, towards tertiary education when it comes to development settings. Uh, we only work in developing countries, and we partner with implementing partners uh, such as UN agencies or international NGOs to implement these programs, which are aligned with the Ministry of Education's uh, vision and strategy. In a nutshell, that's what we do, and we have a lot of investments towards uh, the research component when it comes to thematic research or maybe programmatic and country-based research on the program itself. And what's the dream, what's the vision is to, 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 to have a, um, a, a nationwide scale-up of our program that we're implementing uh, in these uh, countries uh, as pilots and, 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 and hopefully we get all the international donors and, and helping the government to scale that up by the government taking uh, an adoption to these programs. That's in a nutshell what we do as Dubai Cares. We're running on in, in our 13th year. We're providing education to more than 20 million beneficiaries in 59 developing countries. And if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, we just launched one earlier this year before COVID-19. So I think we have touched uh, 60. Um, I'm going to switch now towards the situation and what's happening globally with education. And I'm sure a lot of things that I would be sharing now is, is related to you. And you might know a lot of these information as well. But uh, because the audience is big, uh, I might as well tap into some numbers to kick off uh, the session. Now, um, there's 190 countries which have been affected with COVID-19. 190 countries which had uh, school closures. Uh, uh, from these 190 countries, over 90% of the students of these countries have been affected. Uh, um, um, and we're talking about uh, the, 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 the student population of the world, and 90% more uh, than 90% of those. We're talking about, uh, uh, in numbers, more than 1.5 billion students who have been affected. Uh, in this COVID-19 um, um, pandemic. Um, we have more than 60 million teachers who are no longer in classrooms. We have an issue. In, in the MENA region itself, the pandemic has affected almost 100 million children between the ages 5 and 17. There is a global issue. We have to do something about it. Although Yannick and I were talking uh, earlier that uh, there might be some health issues with regards to distance learning as well. But these health issues can be tackled uh, differently as, as well by having maybe breaks and stops uh, uh, as well. But, but we can't allow any issues or, 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 or barriers to stop learning. Learning is, is, is uh, the humanity, uh, the, the salvation of humanity. Learning has, uh, an education has uh, let us reach wherever we are today in terms of in terms of virtual meetings and seminars and, 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 and in terms of health, in terms of uh, infrastructure, technology, and where we have reached. Um, um, and, and, and if we tap into what's happening globally um, uh, with the immediate economic impact of COVID-19, we are also realizing that young people uh, are facing a difficult entry into the labor market. That has been an issue. And, 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 and the risks are uh, we're going to have uh, a, a long-term consequence uh, 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 on their careers and earnings. We're talking about the whole globe, which a big portion of that, a big percentage is dependent on, 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 um, on the youth 
because of the of their population size are dependent on on, on vocational skills are dependent on skills themselves and also uh, dependent on uh, entrepreneurs we're talking about smes so putting the whole equation the whole planet will be affected if we can't get proper solutions uh, uh, to to the young people uh, globally um, um, of course these challenges are immediate we're living these challenges uh, they relate to school uh, tvet institutions and and company closures and 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 when you put all of these together the challenge becomes much much bigger because we then have to get solutions and if we can't provide solutions to get the young people uh, getting into uh, um, the, the the schooling system, getting into um, the TVET model, uh, getting into companies which have already closed, we are still facing an issue. So no matter how much we look into solving the issue, we realize that there's another issue tied up to the uh, uh, other issue. Um, uh, um, we have to change the TVET provision rapidly. Uh, um, um, and, and, and let's not forget, we have a real life example that we've been uh, um, um, working on and, and dealing with all our lives and now we're moving towards a digital world, world and, and in some cases uh, uh, um, it, it has to be blended uh, with both but what we have to do we have to fill in those gaps to provide various platforms for, for proper delivery where today when it comes to tea that we're dependent on equipment tools tangible things that we we, we, we touch we're not used to give training uh, for uh, vocation training uh, without actually touching the equipment and interacting face to face with a human. Uh, that element is very, very important. But we, we have to uh, um, um, uh, set our minds into the new equation. We will be lying to ourselves and living in a big denial if we think that we're going to come out of this COVID-19 and we go back to uh, where we were. We will be in a denial. Life will not be the same. It will definitely not be the same. In any category or any segment of business or uh, lifestyle or, or working life or working career, everything is going to change. We will have to look at things definitely uh, uh, different, uh, differently. But the provision of TVET, including work-based work learning and distance learning in the current context, will also depend on the uh, digital skills on, on both the trainers and, and the learners and, 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 and the equality issue uh, as well. Each one has different challenges uh, to that. Uh, and, and that is due to the uh, lack of digital uh, literacy as well. So, so these are the, the, the main um, impact that we have seen uh, that uh, uh, is affecting the, 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 the TVET sector. Now, with regards to Dubai Cares, I have mentioned um, uh, that we are supporting the youth. Uh, we are implementing a lot of TVET uh, programs around the world. I, I, I might tap into one or two, uh, depending on time. But I would like to start with one, which is, uh, um, um, I, I've been talking about it uh, uh, um, many times because it's, uh, it's in Latin America, it's, it's Ecuador, basically. Uh, not a lot of funding going from the world to Ecuador, to the Latin Americas. Uh, uh, the main reason being because they're middle income countries um, um, and, and, and emerging countries and not a lot of funding is going there. It has to be from philanthropists or foundations. And, and, and what we did in Ecuador, uh, I mean, I'm talking pre-COVID-19, um, um, tourism was, was, was booming. Um, you have um, um, a huge uh, youth unemployment rate and you have uh, amongst those, they don't speak the, the English language. Now, what we did, we partnered with the VVOB, our implementing partner in, in, in Ecuador. We partnered with the Ministry of Education that has partnered with other ministries, which is the Ministry of Tourism and uh, uh, other ministries as well, to see how we can get these youth who are unemployed, decrease the unemployment rate and, and put them in a sector that is booming. And, and, and we tied up training uh, uh, sessions and, and programs to get the youth being embedded within uh, the system of, uh, uh, of employment and in, uh, into the system of, of, of tourism. So on one hand, we have trained the youth how to become uh, um, 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 workers in the hospitality sectors. We're talking about uh, receptionists in hotels, uh, room service, uh, um, concierge service, desk service. Uh, that is on one part, 
But on other part, we have the, um, the, 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 the tour guides. And, 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 and when you're talking about tour guides in Ecuador, you're talking about uh, 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 the Spanishly driven language where we want to uh, include the English language. So we train them on the English. We train them to become tour operators and even being registered with, with, the, with the Ministry of, of Tourism. So having this collaboration between hospitality and tourism mixed together, uh, uh, it has worked. It, 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 it has been one of our flagships in the world to show that TVET is not only by having handcrafted and, uh, uh, things or getting the youth and, and, and things that is tangible, it can be done in a different way. What has COVID-19 done to this program? Well, it, it came to a stop. Would we let it die? Definitely we won't. And, and, and our partners on the ground are talking to the ministry and, and now we're working on to transforming the trainings into webinars de delivered by professionals, actually. Uh, so it will become more sustainable. Um, uh, and another way, we're using WhatsApp. And the WhatsApp is being done to coach uh, the, the, the teachers and, and, and because it's an easy access because these are questions and answers. It can be done uh, very quickly. Uh, uh, it is important that our partner on the ground also integrates the uh, uh, delivery of the systems and the digital platforms with what the ministry is using and, and it has to be adaptable to what the ministry is doing as well. Um, um, and, and, and looking into all of this, um, 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 and, and, and we know that tourism globally has been the most sector which got hit the hardest amongst all uh, the other sectors. Um, 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 our partner also feels that the potential for sustainable tourism, or we can call it ecotourism, to be a growth area. We can take we, we can take this as an opportunity, and it could lead to different opportunities for young people uh, currently on the program. So so we are evolving with the program. We are not going to keep it on hold. Uh, uh, um, 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 and, and 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 there's a big thing there which is called innovation, and we can take these models and we can tap them through other countries. I'll give you one another quick example. What we're doing very close to our region in the Middle East, uh, Tajikistan. We recently launched. Our first program, actually, in Tajikistan, uh, uh, and it's, an, it's a partnership with Mercy Corps. Uh, the program is set to provide the life and work readiness skills, uh, as well as vocational training and, and, and business development to support 8,000 plus uh, vulnerable uh, young people. Now, the program is facing issues. Um, um, and we're not able to tweak things around as we uh, did with, with, the, with Ecuador. Uh, the immediate challenge is that the program um, is facing uh, the limited access to connectivity. That's a huge issue. Uh, the team is exploring, of course, how best to deliver programs remotely in the current uh, context. Of course, learning from uh, Mercy Corps' uh, uh, global experience. Uh, so bringing that experience and putting it into the program. Uh, uh, the long-term challenge is that many employers prefer to hire people with practical experience. Uh, uh, we're talking about uh, um, they don't believe in remote learning. There are a lot of cultures around the world don't look at uh, uh, distance learning or remote learning or digital learning, the practical way of, of doing learning. Call them old schoolers, maybe. Uh, but that has been a challenge, and, and it makes TVET under COVID-19 uh, uh, particularly challenging in contexts like uh, these in Tajikistan. But for the time being... Uh, the team is reviewing and adjusting to training models to reflect the new market situation post COVID-19. And as Dubai Cares, our priority is to support our partners and to see how we can uh, bring this new rea reality into context on, on, on what we're doing in Tajikistan. Um, um, these are two examples I, I, I mentioned. Um, 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 of course, we, we, we won't be able to also proceed only by having programs globally. We have to have a global advocacy in terms of our reach. We have to be connected with, 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 with various global mechanisms and platforms so, so, so we can pass the message, pass the experience, and, and, and link these uh, mechanisms or platforms together with the causes that's there in the world to have a, a, a one approach globally, to have a global plan. It can be, and it will be, fragmented, of course, but if we streamline things, it, it will work better. So one partnership which we have is with UNICEF uh, through Generation Unlimited. Uh, of course, many of you uh, would know what Generation Unlimited is. 
uh, it was launched in, in, in 2018 at uh, the UNGA. Dubai Cares, we uh, committed to $5 million towards three of their main goals, which is portable uh, certification, digital connectivity, and remote opportunities. Um, 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 of course, the the, the 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 goal is to 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 have young people with a particular focus on on on, on the greatest danger of, of being left behind. That's the the main aim. So we're although we're talking about refugees, IDPs, uh, people on the move, but we're also talking about vulnerable youth in in, in, in different countries who, who will be uh, neglected from society. Um, 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 where we come in is through a very unique program that we funded the case study a year ago. Um, um, and, uh, and, and that case study, the research was done, and now it has evolved into a program called GIGA. It's all in caps, G-I-G-A. And the main aim is basically to, to have internet connectivity in every single school around the world. Hence, that will lead the connectivity to TVET centers as well, because the main uh, uh, goal for uh, Generation Unlimited is youth. It's a youth movement uh, globally. And, um, and during the last board meeting that we had uh, uh, last month with Generation Unlimited, there were many ideas that, would, uh, that, that was put forth on how Generation Unlimited can play a role uh, into tweaking some of their existing models or their future ideas so we can support remote training and, 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 and skilling for youth around the world. Um, um, of course, GIGA is also supported by the International Communication Union, the ITU, and we have many heads of states uh, and key leaders in Africa, South Asia, uh, um, um, Central Asia, the Balkans, uh, the Caribbean, uh, also uh, coming on board uh, to, to be part of the movement. And, 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 and we hope uh, also for the Spark community to look into this and we can be uh, uh, an immediate liaison between you and them. But the more ideas we have, the more we can reshape the dialogue on youth. And now we're talking everything being done uh, uh, remotely. The second is with the um, World Economic Forum. We have a partnership with them and, 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 and we're focusing mainly and to how to focus on education skills and, and future of work to upskill and reskill 15 million youth across 15 countries around the world. That's the main aim. That's, that's the pilot we want to come into. And, and, and again, I'm going to uh, uh, mention it again. It's, it's upskilling and reskilling, two different things. Uh, uh, and, and, and once we have an ecosystem built into that and being practiced into countries and having policies and frameworks and support uh, to get this up and running and, and then we, 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 we tweak some, some other models that we can have live examples, we're talking about a system change around the world when it comes to upskilling and, and, and reskilling. Uh, um, uh, the partnership, of course, with the World Economic Forum gives the bikers a broader platform to shine a light on the continued need to focus on sectors such as TVET uh, to support opportunities for youth around the world as well. Um, um, the third example of, 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 of global advocacy uh, would be also what UNESCO launched at, at the last UN General Assembly, which is the qualifications passport. Now, the main aim uh, for the qualifications passport is it tackles the issue that refugees and migrants often face when applying for higher education in, 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 in the countries that they're being hosted. And, 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 and because what's happening with them, their skills, whatever skills they have and whatever qualifications are not being recognized by, by, by those countries. And, and, and so they go and they seek for higher education, which becomes a hurdle because higher education has a cost as well. So, so this uh, um, qualifications passport, what will it do? It will actually give a, a, a skill-based uh, certification, a global uh, qualifications passport. It's an actual, it's a, it's a qualifications passport that will help them uh, 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 having a UN stamp on it that mm -hmm. we uh, endorse the qualification of this person for this person to have an X job. And, and, and we are funding two of their pilots, which is one is in Iraq and the other one is in Colombia. The UNESCO also recently uh, launched the, uh, the, the Global Coalition uh, for Education uh, uh, for COVID-19 uh, uh, response. Um, 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 we, uh, as Dubai Cares and, and me especially, I was, I was, I'm, 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 a, I'm, I'm in the advisory um, 
um, um, uh, um, uh, board uh, group of uh, the Futures of Education Commission of UNESCO, uh, and, and 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 the first board meeting that was uh, that was done in in March after the launch of the commission. I did emphasize on the point that we have to start a global coalition led by the UN to tackle these issues. We have to have uh, um, uh, 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 digital learning from one side, uh, to and, and that will tackle all uh, things about um, 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 digital curricula, uh, digital content being available, but at the same time having the infrastructure of internet connectivity and the softwares and the systems on how we can have distance learning. And, 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 and by end of March, the uh, UNESCO has, has launched uh, this coalition. Um, um, they, they thank Dubai Cares for that on one hand, but we're not going to stop there by putting an idea. We are going to start funding a few pilots with the coalition on that. And just to conclude, um, if you're going to ask me about how we can rethink TVET uh, um, when it comes to large-scale disruptions, especially in the MENA region, um, um, we, we should start uh, developing a modern technology infrastructure for TVET institutions. We're talking about um, um, internet connectivity, broadcast, software, ICT tools. We have to develop competency-based education curricula with a focus on blending learning, uh, develop um, um, remote training programs for teachers, uh, to ensure their readiness to engage in, in digital learning, uh, invest in strategic partnerships with uh, um, apprenticeship providers. That is also important. Um, uh, provide uh, uh, and, and support, uh, support career guidance and digital skills development opportunities for learners. That's very important. And, and that starts from uh, early secondary uh, school um, and, and onwards. And of course, uh, we have to invest a lot in digital solutions for practical skills development. That's uh, it for me when it comes to uh, TVET. But I just want to take one last uh, minute uh, just they're to tell cut, you. That, they're they're going to cut the system. It's going to cut us up in 30 seconds. So we're <laughs> hoping the largest uh, uh, education summit. It's called Rewired at Expo 2020 Dubai. And it has a large TVET component, we would love Sparks community to tap into curating the content for TVET and youth. Okay, great. No, we'll definitely, um, we just got a few more seconds. Um, we will definitely promote this. And what I very much like and so much appreciate is this very good overview of different networks that are out there. And that's exactly why we invited you for this conference and why I appreciate your keynote then I think the real value will be found in exchanging lessons learned and will be to match our resources all together and try to make an impact in what no doubt will be a very uh, rough uh, ride. So thank you very much for your contribution. Uh, we are switching to the other session where now three uh, university leaders are discussing uh, their drive to go online. And uh, on a personal note, I do hope to see you soon in Dubai once all the air traffic uh, resumes. Sure, definitely, Anik. Is there a Q&A or is the session ended? Can take. We can take some questions, perhaps. Let me just see my queue here from Timon. Oh, no, we ended. No, they have to move to the next one now. Okay, thank but you, Anik. This session thank has been recorded. Uh, it will be available for later viewing, and uh, we will um, we will collect some of the questions and transmit it to your team. Sure, Yannick, uh, please. We would love for the Spark community to be involved into what we're doing with the Global Education Summit, which is rewired at Expo, and because uh, the mm -hmm. one of the main pillars is youth and the future skills, basically. So you guys will play a very big part into curating the content with with ourselves. Great, right, great. We'd love to be part of it, and uh, I already reviewed some of the uh, of the ideas, and I think it's brilliant. We'll be uh, fully on board. Thank you, thank you. All right. Stay safe. Bye bye. You too. Bye bye.